Hey everyone, Kyle here again at the Studebaker National Museum. I am standing upstairs in front of our Manufacturing Victory special exhibit uh, on display until February of 2022. Uh, but I'm going to do something a bit different today. Instead of sharing an object that you can see as part of the exhibit, I'm going to share one that you cannot. Um, but we do know this object was part of our collection at one point, and that is a World War I era mine anchor. Um, which you can see in this photo here from our collection. So we don't know what happened to this object. We have some theories, one of those being during World War II, um, you know, Studebaker may have wanted to contribute to the war effort and they reclaimed some of the metal. This is a fairly large object. Um, again, but we, we do know they had uh, an inactive mine and mine anchor as part of the collection at one point. Um, bit of a mystery. Uh, but today, I want to share this part of the story because it is so interesting and part of um, Studebaker's defense manufacturing past. So uh, during, World War, during World War I, um, this was the first sort of large conflict where submarines were uh, a major part of, of the war. And so uh, to combat the free movement of those German U-boats, um, which were attacking Allied shipping channels, um, they got together and built mines and uh, basically mined the North Sea to prevent those German U-boats from moving around. So these were um, manufactured in America, shipped to Scotland for assembly, and then um, deployed in the North Sea by American and British naval ships. And this was in the first part of 1918. So kind of the end of the war, the latter part of the war. And so tens of thousands of these were built and deployed um, in the North Sea. Um, the mines themselves uh, were fairly effective in, in, in doing their job. Uh, there were, I think, four to six confirmed U-boats sank, likely many more, and I, we're pretty sure that it demoralized the German Imperial Navy, uh, again, because it prevented them from moving around too much, and uh, at that point the war was kind of, you know, trailing, trailing down. So the mines themselves were large steel spheres, about 34 inches across, there was a buoyancy chamber and about 300 pounds of TNT packed in there. And the mines then would be attached to this anchor box, like the one built by Studebaker. And these boxes had wheels on the bottom. They were rolled off the back of a uh, mine laying ship and they would sink under, uh, under the water. And there was a plummet on the side that would sink down. It would unhook a hook that allowed the, uh, the mine itself to detach and the whole apparatus, the uh, anchor box, the plummet would sink down to the seafloor, and then the mine would be uh, pulled down with it to a preset depth. So that's how that whole um, apparatus worked, as you can see in the, in the photo here. So uh, they were, like I said, fairly effective. Studebaker and other auto manufacturers built thousands of these things for the, for the Allies during the First World War. Uh, they were set up to do so. They had experience, you know, with precision machine parts. Uh, and what's interesting, too, is they manufactured every part of that anchor really except for the, uh, the, the, the detonation uh, components and the actual explosives, right? So, um, so all the other machined parts were, were manufactured by American auto companies. So really cool part of World War I um, and again, Studebaker's contribution to um, American defense manufacturing. So thanks again for joining me.